The first tutorial I did on YouTube was a glitch effect, and I was going to go back to that. But this time, I'm going to improve a little bit using the distortion filter, which is pretty cool. So in this instance, we've used some gradients and we've used some noise to just add some kind of trashy kind of glitch effects to our simple type animation. Then on top of that, we're just going to add some filters and see how we go. So this is where we're going to start off. The, you can see here there's like a subtle flickering in the background. I've just created a background object here and in the fill I have put a, I've fed a noise into the alpha channel. So you can see here it's minimum 246. So if I wanted to emphasize that flickering a bit more, I can just bring that down. Um, other values have changed here are the time scale, so I just lifted this up a little bit. And the frequency, I've edited that a little bit as well. So with our text selected, I'm just going to apply them, apply the effects directly to the text in this instance. Open up the distortion filter and change it to directional. And that way everything is just going to be pushed across. And when we jump into the shader, we'll change it from noise down to gradient. And we're going to change the rotation to 90. And you can see here, once we pull this in and out, that our text is distorted along. So what we can do is simply add a few more knots in here just by clicking along. And changing these in various ways. Okay, so now if we just hit play, nothing happens. So we've got to feed something into the offset here. So we just right click on offset, add behavior and put time into the Y. And you can see slowly a few things are happening. So you can see the A is cut off here. I'm just going to jump back here and click on automatic padding. And you can see that that will fix that problem up. We've also got the tiling drop down. We're just going to have to change this to repeat. Okay, so on our frame, we'll go back in here and we'll just change this to three. And there we have the foundations of a bit of a glitch. I'm just going to rename this distortion gradient so know which one is which and add another one. Again, we're going to change the direction mode to directional. You can just click automatic padding as well. And here we're going to drop the scale right down to 0 0.05. We're going to change the frequency a little bit as well. And so the amplitude is where things are going to start stretching out a little bit more. So for this as well, once that's done, you can just drop that down a little bit and you can just see how and increase the time scale a little bit as well. We can adjust the gain there a little bit as well if you wanted to add a bit more, a little bit no more noise into it. And I'm just going to rename this one. Okay, so another filter we're going to add now is our RGB split. As the name implies, this basically separates our channels for us. We're just going to jump straight into the second channel and just drop this down to zero and this is just um, again just a matter of preference to, to see what you like and I've just brought right up the um, repetition uh, sorry the repetition distance down to down to one yeah it's just a matter of tweaking these values until you land on something you're happy with so here I've just got nine two and seven and it's just a subtle effect I'm pretty happy with that Let's go back and add the scan lines filter. For scan lines, I'm just going to increase the count to 200. Drop down the line opacity quite a bit as well, just so it's more of a bit of a subtle effect. And I'm just going to use the shadow mask. But I'm going to drop the shadow mask down quite a bit.
kind of simple, but yeah, you get the general idea. So the final effect we're going to apply here is our glow. And I'm just going to change this to overlay, and I'm just going to drop this down as um, probably about by about half or so. Okay, so now let's just click on here and add a sub mesh. So we're going to use the sub mesh to basically move these little elements all around on the screen. So I'm going to click on here and I'm just going to go around. And I'm just going to change the rounding to about 50. And I'm going to change this to random. And once I change this, you can see all the letters are scooting off. I'm just going to remove the position here and I'm just going to use one and I'm just going to put that straight into the X and then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to put this round to the Y. And I'm just changing the max and the min here so that they spread out across the screen. And that's the same with the, the minimum there as well. And these are all controlled by seed, which is just going to be a value field. And the I'm just going to put this over into our other random. So if I just put something in here, they're all kind of in that same row. So I'm just going to jump back into here and go seed value plus whatever. And that way, when I adjust this, that'll go all over the show. And that number that I added to it, it could have been any number. So now I can just animate that. And we have our numbers jumping around the screen. You can adjust the strength of it here. So as it comes in, so I'm not going to tweak any keyframes to anything here, but you just get the general idea. And you can see how we'll just jump around and then they're slowly merging into it. So the other thing that happens here is that the, the text changes. So what we can do here is come down to our string manipulator. And with our string manipulator, it comes up straight away as a, sh a shuffle string. So we're just going to change that to transition. And then we can change this to whatever we want. A tutorial. And then we can just animate this across. So I'll just hit a keyframe here. Hit a keyframe here. Obviously, I could just retype the tutorial in capital letters, but there is a, another manipulator you can add to it. And this manipulator is change string case. So that way, it's just going to come through and it's capitalized it. And that's our glitch tutorial. I hope that helped out and you learned a thing or two from it. Just jump back in there and tweak those numbers and see how you go. Thanks for watching.